A lot of folks write us looking for advice on wood fillers. They want to know what they should use when they're trying to fill a nail hole or a gouge or even a crack in a piece of wood. And it's a good question, Tommy, because there are a lot of options out there. Paintable, stainable, water-based, epoxies. What do we use? Well, it really depends on whether you're inside the house or outside the house, whether you're going to paint the wood or stain the wood. All right, well, let's say that we are inside the house and mm -hmm. we're going to paint the wood. We've got a piece right here of crown molding. Uh, it has not been painted. We've got some nail holes. How do I handle these? Well, you can use a vinyl spackle right here. Mm -hmm. You can use a water-based wood filler right here. Just fill the hole, but you always want to overfill the hole so it will shrink down when you sand it. And the idea here is that because we're going to sand this smooth and then paint it, it's pretty forgiving. And so what we choose isn't that important. Right. All Sometimes right. what I like to do is I'll actually take a piece of wood like this with some sawdust from the wood, and I'll actually take my glue and fill the void or the hole, even a nail hole, fill it up. So in this case, you're going to make your own I'm filler? I'm going to make my own filler. I'm take the sawdust, put it into the wet glue, and mix it around, mm -hmm. forcing it into that crack. See, I'm actually making a little paste. Yep. And then when that sets up? When that sets up, I'll take my sander and sand it and that crack will disappear. Oh, that's a nice tip. All right, now let's say we're going to stain this piece of wood right here. So it's clear now. We want to fill the holes. We want to make sure we get a nice even color. Right. Well, if you're going to stain it, you want to make sure you have a filler that's stainable. There's a solvent base and a water base. They're both stainable and they both set up pretty quick. Okay. Now, if we've got a piece of wood that is already stained mm -hmm. and we want to get a nice color match and we've got, a, let's say, a nail hole in this guy. Right. Well, you can actually use these these crayons right here that you skim over the hole. You've got to try to match the color. And you skim over the hole with that, and then you brush it in, and then wipe it off with a rag. Piece of wood over here, you try to find one that'll match the wood. Mm -hmm. and you rub it in, fill the hole, keep filling it right up. Yep. And then you rub it with a rag and polish it right off. You got some of that sawdust left over from your last experiment on here. Okay. And are there putties that we can use in addition to crayons? Yeah, there's oil-based putties that you can get, and then you actually take a couple of these or three of them, whatever it takes, and mix them together until you get the color that you want. Gotcha. All right. Now let's say we've got ourselves a big crack or a gouge. Mm -hmm. Putty's not going to be sufficient. Well, if it's inside and you're going to paint the wood, you can use a Bondo. Auto body filler works great. Now, why do you say if it's inside? Because if you use this outside, this becomes very hard, and it doesn't expand and contract with the wood, and it can break away. So inside the wood doesn't move that much, but outside the wood moves a lot, right. and filler like a Bondo is no good. Right. Uh, so in that case, see, there's a two-part epoxy right here that's very flexible, and it's meant for wood. And here's a piece right here that we've patched a corner on a, on a shutter. Then you can also use it to fill holes and cracks and voids and make moldings out of it. Now you're saying that if this were, say, a Bondo, this would be too hard, so if this wood moved, it would pop that right off or send a big crack through yeah, there. It'll crack and it'll eventually fall off. Now, uh, how do we work with this? Does it take a long time to set up? Can we sand it? <clears throat> this takes a day or two, depending on the weather, for it to dry and then you're ready to work with it. Okay. Um, and we also see a lot of uh, plastic outside now, PVC, PVC trim. PVC trim is great because it holds up to the weather. Sure. Uh, here's a couple of screw holes right here. Here's one that I've already filled and there's one that I'm going to fill. But this is actually a two-part acrylic that comes in a tube. It actually mixes inside the tube. Sets up very quickly. It's great for an adhesive also. All right, so you put it in there, and how quickly is it going to set up? Well, if I put this in here, it's going to be set in five minutes. You see it mixing right in the tube there? Yep, so that's two parts coming together All into right. one. Overfill it. Uh-huh. All right. Now, here's one here that I've overfilled. Wait about 15 minutes. Take my sander. Well, now that's a pretty good color match. You could probably just leave that. Right. Now, if you paint it, it'll disappear. It'll look great as well. Thank you, Tommy. My pleasure.